You got the countdown and everything. Sweet. All right. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the deeper meeting. I'm super excited because today I have a guest with me, Manuele. So Manuel is my cousin. I should say he's from Italy, although he was born in the States, but he moved to Italy and lived there most of his life. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Emmanuel, uh, let him introduce himself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do, a little bit about who you are, maybe what you love, anything you wanna throw in there. Yeah, normal, pe normal people call me the fake Italian because I'm like, yeah, I grew up in Italy, <laughs> I grew up in Italy my entire life and, and oh wait, I was born in the States. No, I moved back when I was six. But yeah, my name's Emmanuel, I, I am 22. She's just leaned to her 22. I, I love to do many things, including business-wise, studying, very passionate about cybersecurity, and you know, play the piano, do some interesting things. But for now, my main focus is trying to grow this business that I have, and uh, you know, really excited to be here, get some chats down. Yeah, definitely. And I'm super excited that you're here. I'm super excited to talk to you, uh, because frankly, I think what you're doing is awesome, and I have a a little bit of a feeling that you might be a big deal in a year or so. So let's see how things go. Um, well, that's the plan, right? <laughs> but I know that you're doing, I know that you're having a great time. You're, you're, you're seeing a lot of success. So I'm just excited to get to talk a little bit about that. Highlight why and, and what it is that you're doing that's bringing you success. And, you know, really just dive into a whole lot of manual. So a lot of people might think, oh, yeah, what I do is very basic. It's the format is pretty basic. Um, if I were to describe it generically, I would say I own a marketing agency that does also security services for online businesses. Um, to go a little deeper, I would say that I do business to business marketing. So online service based businesses who need to build their email infrastructures, whether it's for outbound transactional emails or inbound emails as well. And I add a layer to security to that. So configuration of DNS servers, perfect. I hope I'm not speaking Arabic for um, most people, but I basically make sure that an infrastructure is built well, functional, maintained, and I include, you know, reply management, uh, DNS monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. I add a layer to security to it, as I am a cybersecurity student in the last year of George Mason University right here in Virginia. And yeah, very, very, very passionate about what I do. And I've been doing it for, I'd say now 18 months and for 14 of those 18 months i was head down getting desperate trying to figure out what actually i needed to give the market and you know to be honest just getting proof of concept and figuring stuff out at first um very recently i had very much success with uh four of the clients that i'm serving and it's man it's been a ride you 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 get you get to a point where you have problems on problems, but they're like better problems, right? So just recently I had a problem that I have to bring on a few hires and it's, and I have to delegate a bunch of stuff that I, you know, I have to take that leap of faith and, um, you know, pray and say, and do stuff right that, um, you know, I have to give in the hands of someone else. And these are, um, you know, they could be low level things for some, people, but there are, they are high level to some extent. And so for example, sourcing the emails, building the infrastructure and yeah, that's been just generically, generically what's been happening for the past 18 months. But yeah, hand, head, heads down working. I think, I think that's probably one of the hardest things for any entrepreneur is being able to delegate the work that they're so passionate about doing because you're a perfectionist and you're particular about how things are done. It's not easy to give that work to somebody else to let them do it. But if you don't, I think you're screwed. So I'm actually excited. I didn't realize uh, that you're already at that point, and that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I, I really want to be humble. So like, I am not anywhere close to where you know my my mind and vision are. But it's fantastic to be able to speak when I get some fruits back of you know putting a head down for 18 months. And I believe that 18 months is pretty early. Um, now that I see. Now that I see, um, and by the way, pay no, pay no mind. I'm not saying that I have insane, crazy results, but the wheel is moving. And because the wheel is moving, I have to be aware of that momentum so I can actually withstand a higher pace when it comes yep. in the near future. 
Definitely. I mean, I remember when you first started working on this, um, you were talking about just doing a couple of POCs for people and just like doing your best to get your yourself in front of somebody and like essentially serve them and just see where that went. So can you actually talk a little bit about that? Because I'm curious to see how that had worked out for you and like how the transition went from you just providing a service completely free of charge as like a practice and a proof of concept into actually gaining some clients. So there are mixed opinions on this, you know, on the internet, friends, family. Uh, most people go down the route of, yeah, you know, do it for free, um, get people some, get some, you know, people results and use that as a case study so you can prove that you've had some backing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas other people say, oh, no, don't do free trials. You need to have that frame of you are professional. And because you are not putting yourself in the market for something you don't know how to do, then you are supposed to charge. Mm -hmm. um, I rely a little bit more on the second. So I like to first start getting that momentum, start making money and um, utilizing that as an edge to make you better. Let's say you don't know how to do all of this, right? At first, yeah, I did know about security. Yes, I did know about email security and whatnot. But I, of course, I did not know outbound marketing because what I do is cold email for people. Yeah. And so I didn't know, pardon the language, a damn thing about cold email. <laughs> so how did I figure that out? Well, yes, I did take a few paths, you know, with a few clients, I went, okay, I'll do everything for free and see how it goes. Um, but the problem with that is that they don't value your service enough. There's no, there's no exchange in wanting to actually provide value, quote unquote, or actually produce something because you have nothing that's holding you accountable. You're like, oh, these guys didn't pay me anyways. That is the first thing that I felt. And so I acquired a little bit more knowledge during time and I felt confident enough to start charging a retainer month by month and going on a performance based fee. What I like about that is that I have a no brainer offer that um, basically refunds if something goes oddly wrong for them, which I am pretty confident those results are never going like those negative results are never going to happen. So that's why I can, you know, I can withstand this offer. Worst case scenario, what is it? You get refunded. I refunded one person. Yep. Only one person. And so What's what's the worst days that what's the worst thing that can happen? I refund you, and Definitely. I really really recommend going down that route of, okay, put a number, just say the number, wait for the prospect to respond, you know, address any logistics or objections that they may have. If it makes, just make the next right step. I am, yeah. I pride myself in knowing that what I do is, I only pitch an offer to who, literally is a no brainer. To benefit from what I give them, because right. honestly, if there's something better and cheaper, hey, go there. Because I, I wouldn't want to fool myself. Why no, would I fool course. you? How, how and did so you it's get so clear. How did you get so clear on who it is, and like, how do you identify that business owner who can really benefit from what you're doing? So any service-based business that operates online needs to have, um, in some way, an email infrastructure, correct? Now I'm not going that broad. I'm going to go to people who offer online replicable services that are easy to easy to fulfill. Of course, they're harder to sell. That's why they're introducing new acquisition acquisition channels, and they must have some sort of offer that passes. I'd say a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe probably preferable um, retain monthly retainer or you know one time offers that go from three k to above. Um, people who have that sort of offer can get a good conversion rate from cold emails that are outbound. I also work with, um, this is like my main focus. I introduce layers of security to that as well. So they can take the infrastructure even after they're done working with us and it's all theirs, it's all secure. Of course, staying with us allows me to um, keep maintaining that security, which is the whole purpose of it. I don't know why would you, would you leave that if it's working? Yeah, that doesn't make much sense, but you know, some people prefer that. And I also, um, worked with a few software companies that like to have an inbound email marketing system to increase, you know, um, long time, lifetime value of mm. their customers, you know, gain more from them, keep them, stay in them, convert free trials more. Um, I am not doubling down on that for the simple reason that um, cold email is just my number one area of, uh, I, I, I feel that I could challenge anybody on cold email 
knowledge awesome. and I have and I have a lot to learn yeah. but it's fantastic how um, it's fantastic how much you know the confidence you have in one thing can push you to say no to others where there's you know big cash on the table yep and you, you just prefer to do what you're best at so yeah, yeah that, I mean, that, that's the way I go about sorting yeah absolutely please don't let me cut you off you, you keep going I'm no just... no please yeah no that's basically the way I um, I sort people who are a good fit for mm -hmm. this email infrastructure and I also think that big businesses have a um, have a tendency to go more towards the oh the numbers game right so you they, they play a quantity instead of quality game where at you know oh if you do enough you'll get a two percent conversion rate I tend to go to the smaller businesses that are trying to operate on a more quality level and a more targeted niche for instance mm -hmm. that's why a, mar a marketing agency could come to me and say hi hey, I need cold emails and I could tell them okay you know what's your client avatar what's your it's probably easier an easier job for them to land it off to someone like me instead of trying to play the numbers game and send a bunch of emails to a bunch of people and get that 2% return is very is really and people who have specific niches also are spending a lot of money. Yep. But yeah. Again, I I I do think that a lot of business owners have trouble letting things go out outsourced or out of house or you know even out of their hands in general. But again, I I'm a firm believer that there comes a point in every single business where if you don't have help or you're not willing to outsource, you're just going to flop. Like, I don't think you, it takes an army these days to do something. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, and I, I just, can, t and I can teach teams. I could, yeah. I could listen. This is one thing I'm thinking in the future. I could do consult. I could do consultancy. Right, consulting gig. That would be cool. about it, you know, and that, and, and that's cool. That's something I'm willing to explore. I'm not sure if I'm, uh, I'm going to transition to that, but it's, yeah. it's, it looks fun. It sounds yeah. fun. And it's, I've done it in the past for a few people who couldn't afford to nice. purchase a service with us because I, I had, you know, not yep. done enough research on them. But, you know, they appreciated it and it actually helped them a lot. So, cool. you know, that's also an option. I, uh, I, think, I think one of the coolest things that you've done is you've identified a tilt in your avatar. Like there's a, or I should say a tilt in your niche and your offering because so many people out there will do copywriting so many people out there will do cold email emails but building the the funnel with security in mind i don't see a lot of people doing that and you throw dns servers all over the place we're geek speaking and, and all but i see people like talk about it briefly but i've never seen anyone actually have a, a specific tilt toward security so i'm curious and just for everybody listening like what exactly is security and, and what's the purpose behind focusing on security when we're talking about email uh, funnels, when we're talking about outbound email marketing? Security is a beautiful concept. Now, without the email variable in the middle, I would say security is the sole purpose of defending assets. And because I am building assets such as an email infrastructure that needs to be defended, um, security comes into place. Now, security is not protecting and not pre and preventing attacks. Security is deferring the attacker somewhere else. So let's say my, yes, let's say, um, now let's introduce the cold email. So cold emails, uh, DNS verification happen with a lot of records. The top three are DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. Um, you will just go in any Facebook group and ask, oh, what do I have to do to send cold emails? And you'll just get the most random people say the same, copy, paste the same comment, say, you need to verify your DMARC security expert, right? And so it's not, it's not just that. Um, but when you, can, when, you, when you don't want to be spoofed or fished or use, you know, your IP getting used, preventing your IP getting used, those three are the top ones. Now, people, because people don't care about how things work, they just want them to work. That's why they say, oh, just put the DKIM, SPF, and DMARC records. They copy this guy, do this guy. Okay, cool. But I pride myself in knowing what they do specifically, how they can help any email infrastructure, and how a small detail can just mess, that all, that, mess all that up, right? So when it comes to security and convenience, 
convenience and security are inversely proportional, right? One goes up, the other one goes down. The more something is secure, the less convenient it is to use, operate, whatever, okay? And this includes these three records with when it comes to DNS authentication and also DNS maintenance. Here, let me introduce a little parenthesis here. When you buy a domain for cold email, right? You buy it on Google, you get MX, that's an MX record, right? A mail server record that is already enabled. You get SPF that's already enabled. You get DKAM generated. It, it's all done for you. Whereas if you go, if you buy a domain on GoDaddy, you need to verify your DKAM records. You need to generate them in the Outlook 365 mailed server. You need to do all these sorts of things. So, and I'm not even going to say if you buy it from Bluehost, you have to do the whole thing by yourself. So, and yeah, and well, people say, people, you know, don't know these things at first. That's why they go ask people like me, be like, hey, which one is the best to do? And yep. this is such a small part of the email, but it's a big one in the security. And it's mm -hmm. so convenient to buy it on Google. And yep. in, in totally fair, I buy them from Google. Google is right now, it's the most expensive one, duh, yep. because it gives you the most, it, you know, it has the less, the less margin of error. Definitely. But, but, but if you do want to pay... Saves you. Yeah, right, like, yeah. If you do want to pay pay close attention to something in general, you do want to give it um, the right time. It's not that convenient, right, to have um, to have a two factor authentication for every single email every time you log in. But is it secure? Yes, more secure than not having it. I think I, I love uh, just to bring it back <clears throat> a little bit. Like I yeah. love the the way that you talk about security as, and, and like the main purpose is to protect assets. Um, and we got to speak a little bit about this week or two ago and just kind of dive into like the, how, how security can actually teach us things about our everyday life. And so I just, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your philosophy on like, how do you take the principles of security and apply them in your every day. Absolutely. So security is not only um, securing, securing digital assets, securing physical assets, but it's securing ourselves as a, the main asset. We are the biggest asset we have in this world. We have been given this asset from God, the universe, you know, you fill in your blank, but it's, it's the biggest asset that we have, our body, our mind, our soul, and we need to secure it somehow. Every day we make a proactive decision, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, to secure this asset. Now, is it convenient? Oh, no. I secure, my, I, I secure many things about myself, um, and I've only started doing this recently, but one of them is my health. So me going to the gym six days out of seven, maybe, um, you know, maybe people are like, oh, just go three days. But I go six days out of seven because... That secures my self-discipline. That secures my self-mastery. That secures my health. I eat well, and um, I, you know, just FYI, I'm trying to explore like carnivore diets here and there. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool to be honest. They're very interesting yeah. um, and challenging. I cool. I walk every day. I like to get good amount of sun. You know, I didn't get a tan this summer, which is an L for me. But <laughs> I. I tend to walk every day and um, get good vitamin D. You know that is me securing my physical health um, as an asset. Now mm -hmm. it's not convenient at all. This takes a lot of my time, but I will give it until the day I die. And now, what is another asset that I have? It is my knowledge. So I am mindful of what comes into my brain. I need to secure the information that goes inside my ears through my brain and choose which one goes out of the other ear or which one stays, which one, yeah, exactly, which one I write down and remember for the next day or for the next time I'm going to revisit it. This is actually the biggest game changer for me because yeah. when I proactively choose, okay, what information am I going to assimilate? I don't watch, I haven't watched the news in 18 months. Yeah, Amazing. just is exactly when I started. I haven't watched the news in 18 months. I just get it. Like what you need to know you get. If you really wanna do research about a specific thing, then good, get your 20, 40 hours of research that you want to have. Um, but to be totally honest, it doesn't require more than that. And a big thing for people my age and even younger is scrolling on social media, right? Many people, and I will start doing it very shortly, but use it for business, use it for you know attracting leads or spreading a message that they like. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. I encourage that. 
but I don't want that to be an excuse to, um, at 9 p.m. before going to bed, scroll for an hour on your phone because that type of information will deteriorate your brain long term. It is insane the effects that it does um, because I know the opposite. For last year, for 90, I would say 95 to 100 days, I did not, I literally just uninstalled all, all apps that weren't WhatsApp, messages, phone calls. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wow. Nothing. Like even I had to access everything from my computer, mm-hmm. even like the emails and stuff. Oh, what if I was like really, what if I was outside and I really needed email? Doesn't matter. Hey, I'm trying to secure an asset and it needs radical change. At first, what we do is we build the infrastructure. We dedicate as much time as possible to building that something right the first time. And then we maintain it. It's not that you start maintaining um, something that's non-existent. So mm-hmm. when I try to secure this asset of what information comes into my brain, what diet, what food I'm eating, my body, my mind, my soul, you know, I pray a, a lot. So that's also securing an asset from, Spiritual. you know, you can, you can say Absolutely. demons or oh, okay. um, that's, that's what I pay attention to when I say that that's where, that's where the security has to go. That's where it blocks the outdoors to, yeah. you know, condition you. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's no secret to anybody that it's important to focus on your, your mind, your body, your spirit, right? It's, it's not surprising. No one will ever be like, oh, that's, that's a weird thing to say. But I think just looking at it from the light that you need to protect those assets at all cost, because what I find a lot of entrepreneurs will struggle with is they have a very hard time setting the boundary and protecting that asset specifically. So they get pulled into 20 to 25 different things. And like you said, they didn't set it up properly in the first place. And therefore the main t- maintenance of that asset is just so difficult, whether that's their health, their mentality, their knowledge and information, their spirituality, that becomes extremely difficult to maintain if you haven't created that strong foundation for yourself. And I would look at the foundation as being a habit, right? When something is almost second nature, like you don't wake up in the morning now and say, am I going to go to the gym? No, you are going to go to the gym. It's in fact, it's weird if you don't go to the gym. And so building that strong foundation anywhere, whether again, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's praying every day, whether it's being selective of those that you hang out with, all of that, building that strong foundation and then maintaining, I think is key. And, and I just love the, the way that we say, like, it's important to protect these things because a lot of people are very loose and they kind of like let boundaries get pushed and, and they lack the discipline to say, like, this is really more important to me and I'm going to make the decision to protect it. Like right now for me, this podcast episode is an asset for me. I'm prioritizing this. My girlfriend left 25 minutes ago to go to a party. I was like, okay, the party starts at four. I'm going to leave at probably 6.30 or 7 from my house after I've done what I need to do because this is very important to me. This is an asset. This is something that's not going to last me just a couple hours of fun. It's going to last me forever. Right? I'm building that foundation and I'm maintaining now that foundation of importance for myself. So I, I just I think that's such a cool frame of re- of mind to like view what I'd consider discipline, habits, personal development for all of us. And also you've been doing it for a while. So for instance, it's about building the man when it comes to the things you just said right now. Mm-hmm. Discipline, self-development, you know, grit as well, endurance. Yep. Yep. Endurance is a big one and listen, I'm speaking like this right now, I know nothing. I haven't bled yet, right? Mm-hmm. I haven't bled yet, and we need to be aware of that mm-hmm. and be ready for that moment. So if you're building the man, quote unquote, you need to have, everyone has a void at some point. We have this oh, big awakening, whatever it is in your life, right? Traumatic experience. Everyone has it. No one can avoid it, period. Um, we all know what I'm talking about. So once we have that, oh, as men, there's a void. Ah, what do we fill this void for with? Ah, right? You have to build yourself. So what I fill it with is definitely, because I am a Catholic, unconditional love from God. But when I, when I mean, um, what, I, what do I mean by that? I mean that I utilize this unconditional love to serve others in the world. And I utilize it also to build myself, to build the man. And when you build the man, you need to have these traits of self-discipline, of self-mastery, self-knowledge, 
and especially personal development. You only do these through habits, as you said. That's fantastic. Great book, Atomic Habits. James Clear, James Clear says I love it. you you need. Yep, absolutely. You need to um, you need to make it easy at first, right? I did, it's not that I when I went on vacation and I stopped going to the gym for a week, I came back and it was easy as before. Oh no, ah, uh, you need baby steps. Like you need to get in your you need to get up, get in your gym clothes. Um, and say, okay, if I'm still tired, I'm going to go back to bed. And then you get in your car and say the same thing. Let's break down the example with the three pillars of security, right? So confidentiality, integrity, Absolutely. and availability. So break down your yes. example using those pillars as reference. Okay. In that, in the, that's a little bit of a different example. So when I okay. keep, keep, when I keep going to the gym, let's say I want to preserve that habit to secure my asset of being healthy right so confidentiality integrity availability three pillars of cybersecurity and security in general um confidentiality you do want to make sure that you are you know being the one who's aware of whatever information or assets that you are going to secure right you're confidential about it so it's not that you're waking up and telling everyone hey I'm going to the gym or whatever, mm. you know, some, in some, this is a little bit hard to ana analogize because, you know, I, I can actually, who's going who's gonna to come to you? <laughs> I can, I can absolutely see it. I think that confidentiality in this regard is exactly what you said. It's not waking up and screaming to high heaven that you're doing these things. It's like that silent work. And it means so much more like personally, when I go to the gym, it means so much more for me than it means to anybody else. And so why do I need to provide or share that energy with anybody? I'll, I'm going to keep it all for myself. I'm going to be very confidential, right? I'm, I'm going to hold that close to my heart and be very selective about who I'm sharing my, my vision, my dreams, my uh, progress, and my success with. In order to stand out to a thousands, you need to outwork thousands in front of nobody. And yeah, you can, we can put confidentiality right there. Also, number two integrity you're going to the gym yeah are you doing the right exercises are you doing what you're supposed to do are you writing it down on your note on your notebook i have a notebook it has the same things every week sometimes i just increase the weights right progressively and it has the same things am i perfect no am i going to figure it out along the way yes am i going to perfect those things along the way yes probably when we work out you'll say hey move move better this move better this way yeah with the tricep you remember yeah, yeah remember. that's <laughs> yeah so we we when we went to LA fitness once i was i was doing the triceps wrong and you gave me the right movement so i'll probably need that more Be, but that's that's a form of integrity you're keeping yourself accountable and you're doing what you're supposed to do if you want to use the gym example now availability are you putting yourself in situations where you can access the gym environment is everything so cool environment is everything and that's you know james clear as well says in atomic yep. habits uh, environment is everything so you need to condition yourself um to be in a position where you are going to complete certain tasks right why do i do i i my room is a sanctuary my yes. bedroom i do not allow anything in there this is rare that my phone is right here because yep. this would not be here because on the phone, no, because I was having problems with power before connecting. Yep. And, you know, if I didn't have that, this phone wouldn't be in here. But I, I treat every place as a sanctuary. Environment so cool. is everything. And this, I wouldn't be able to do what I do in the yep. specific rooms if it weren't for me creating that specific environment tailored to so those tasks. Important. Same thing for the gym. So important. I mean, this chair that I'm sitting in right now, the only time I will <clears throat> allow myself to sit in this chair is if I'm coming up with ideas for content, recording a podcast, or I'm actually like typing out scripts or any anything else that has to do with creativity. This is a creative box. I will not sit in this chair to scroll through any social media. I won't sit in this chair if I have guests. That's why I have a couch. I won't sit here to eat. It's, it's not for any of that. I'm a firm believer that you need to create specific spaces for specific purposes. In fact, I'm gonna take it one step further soon I'm going to rent a garage at the apartment complex that I'm at, and I'm going to use that specifically for my podcasting and content creation, because I think it's so important to have a space dedicated solely to a specific purpose. I don't believe you can do like, I see a lot of people try to do multi-use type of things. The space might be able to, like you can use the space differently physically, but mentally 
You cannot. It just doesn't work like that. You yep. condition yourself. Every single action you take all day long in a given space is conditioning yourself. Like when I hit the pillow, I fall asleep. Why? Because bed, the only thing I do in bed is sleep. Yep. You, you know, yeah, those are the, there exactly. are the very specific things that you do in bed, right? When you sit on the couch, you're relaxing. It's, it's a place for entertainment. When you sit at your, your table, well, that's where you're eating, right? You socialize there. You have a drink with a friend. Like there, it's not a ridiculous thing or a concept to, to consider that specific places should be utilized for very specific things. I actually, I love, I'm going off on a freaking rant for no reason, but like I love- No, 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 this is, this is all relevant to the, the, the fact that you, you are protecting an asset, you're protecting yeah. your environment, and you're making yourself available to secure that, yep. and that is fantastic. So yep. no, please continue. So you know, you ever watch any of the shows, like the Viking shows or anything like that? Not, but I think um, I know what you're talking about because my dad does. Okay, I'm huge into it. But the, the reason I bring it, bring it up is because they have a specific building for everything. Like there's a specific building where you have like a mess hall and that's where you eat and celebrate with everybody. Then they have their room, right? Their specific place, their chamber where they go to sleep, whatever, you know, whatever else they're doing in their, in their room. I don't know those crazy Vikings, right? So like everything, and then they have other areas for training and, and like, coming up with these specific places and then again being able to build that environment to suit your habits and protect those assets that we're talking about here is incredibly powerful like in fact sitting here like this is actually work for me like i have to set up because i'm in my living room i have to set things up every single time and it's absolutely the most annoying thing ever like i want to just come in here sit down and and start recording it, it takes a lot of mental energy to sit down, like to prepare everything, like set the frame properly, make sure the light looks right, put the light to the right intensity in the right spot. I've got my camera on my tripod and I've got my computer in front of me. And if you can actually see what it looks like, it's ridiculous because I have my laptop sitting on a bar stool. So that's not ideal, right? Like I know appearances are amazing. We like that. But for me, mentally, if I had a studio where things were set up, I walk in the same time, same way, every, every time the angle is exactly the same, there's a lot to be said for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't have told unless you have to, uh, I, could, I, I can't tell unless, you know, but now yeah, you told me, so. <laughs> I, like to, <laughs> I like to let everybody in on the process um, because while I'm a stickler for a lot of things, I also want to show that you can do a lot with a little. Like you can turn this space where I have a seat, a bookshelf and a microphone into a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and that's when it, so especially when the, I, let's say remote revolution came in the past two slash almost three years. Um, you know, everyone has this thing where you just got to make it work with what you have indoors, like inside. And, and especially now is when environment matters the most, you know, a piece of advice if I had, if anyone's struggling with sectioning their environment for specific tasks, just literally just tape your floor, just make sections. Even if it's small, like 50 square feet, just section. That's what I did. That's what I did at my previous house. And I had the desk and the bed. It was impossible to fall asleep in less than 20 minutes. And yep. that's, you know, now, now I hit the pillow, boom, I'm dead. That's amazing. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just sectioned it with tape. And so, you know, the foot couldn't step on the other side unless the actions were to, you know, work on the business or, you know, study, et cetera, et cetera. Dedicate myself to that. Or, yep. you know, the other side, if I want to sleep. So, yeah, but you can make anything happen with, you know, what you have. It's fantastic. It's what we've done. Make do. The yes. people who make do are the ones with um, the less standards, you know, the ones who go further, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, it, it's very easy to sit here and be prescriptive and say that you need to have these three qualities to be a successful person. But I don't think it's actually possible to do that. I think there's so much that goes into it. Like, yes, setting up your space and optimizing your space is an amazing way to support what you're doing. But at the end of the day, you still need to decide that you're going to do it and make it happen. So there's a lot to be said about just raw grit and, and tenacity and accountability toward like achieving anything that you want to achieve. Yeah, it's just a decision you make at any moment. 
every day you make about like five to ten decisions. Yeah. And yeah, you're the master of those, whether you do it voluntarily and voluntarily, by the way. That's why when we wake up, we're like, up oh, here, I make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> or you or you set up a system. Uh, well, I'm not going to go off on the tangent, but you can set up a system so you really don't have a decision. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Or when you're, well, yeah, that is true, actually. Yes. You're conditioning yourself to minimize that. 50 50 to yeah. a less than one percent that you don't you're, even consider absolutely. it the opportunity cost is like negative so yeah. you're not even going to yeah absolutely. you're right you're right it's not possible to force a decision but you could certainly like push yourself in the direction of a decision can make it involuntarily and make big believe just don't could never consider it again be yeah. like oh that's not even an option for that's me not right an option. That's <laughs> well i think i mean i love this stuff i could talk about it all day long but I do have a couple of questions, but I want to, I want to just say this one more Absolutely. thing because I think that's such a cool thing, like a cool point that you just made. Um, there's something to be said about becoming the person who you want to be before you are that person. And I think that driving everything back toward your values and your principles is one of the most important things you can do because you need to be able to say, like when, when there's a bowl of ice cream in front of you, but your goal is to drop 30 pounds, you need to be able to say, I'm the kind of person who doesn't eat ice cream, even if you ate it yesterday. Because if you can't do that and start to believe that you are already that person who will not eat that ice cream, you're just going to keep eating it. And that's a silly example, but look at it like anything. Like if you didn't tell yourself before you sold and and like got your first client on retainer, that you're the kind of person who does that and can do that, it never would have happened. The you of the future is holding your hand. Yes. And you have to hold his hand, their hand, whatever they are. And by the way, you go to the gym and you think you're just going to work out a year or two and become ripped and that's it. No, you are not going to the gym to get the goal. You're going You're going to focus on the action. You are a person who works out now. Yes. Ta-da! Guess what? Lifestyle. You're going to work out. Yeah, you're going to work out as a lifestyle. And guess what, Peter? You didn't start working out in high school just to work out five years. You worked out your entire life since then. Yes. And that's something that people have to consider and think about. Be like, okay, it's not that I'm just going to get this business and then exit and whatever in 10 no. years. No, that you're becoming a person who can do business. You're becoming a person who knows how to sell. You're becoming exactly. a person who knows what the good, right product fit for a person is. You are becoming. And, and that person, you are not that today, but he's holding your hand. Yep. And you are going hand in hand with them, focusing on the action. How imperfect it may be, it doesn't matter. I need to get better at this, yes. by the way. But it doesn't matter. Just get it done. I think this will be my final question because, believe it or not, this one often gets pretty deep um, and takes way longer than you might expect it to. Uh, but it's, it's quickly becoming my favorite question. And... It's actually one that I'm, I'm planning to ask on just about every interview that I'm going to do with somebody uh, because you're an extremely intelligent human being. You're an extremely disciplined human being. But at the end of the day, I know there are still things inside of you that you're wrestling with and that are not perfect. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that no matter how high performing you are, no matter how incredible you seem, there's always something else that we're working on and not to diminish you, but to highlight that you're a human being and to kind of inspire everybody else to see like, yeah, we still deal with it too. And we could talk the talk all day long, but we've got stuff to deal with. So my question to you is what's something that you really need to hear right now that, well, that's really the question. What's something that you need to hear right now? Like something that you need to tell yourself that you've been putting off. Um, what I really feel that the past two weeks have tried to tell me is get it done. Just do it. Because sometimes, sometimes I don't. Let's say I prioritize my business work and schoolwork doesn't get done. It just piles up, man. And it's bad. And we all procrastinate in something. And I feel that even if it's not in my quadrant of importance, 
I, you know, it, I, I really struggle with this and I struggle with getting the, it's not that I'm not effective in that. It's that I, I need to highlight its importance as well because of the goals I have. And this ties to what, well, you know, what really, um, I feel needs to be yelled in my face. <laughs> and, um, it's about, um, you know, value the right things because I don't, I don't put too much attention on how this, how, what I do serves others more than it helps me. Right. I might be helping others more than myself and I need to stop being selfish. Um, because you know, Hey, I close a client 15, 15, uh, hundred dollars a month retainer. Yay. Cool. Plus performance. That that's, that shouldn't be something I celebrate that should. Yeah, sure. That's be something I acknowledge, but that should be something that, okay, I'm going to get this guy the best results ever. So then when I have one of my goals is to build a nonprofit, a charitable nonprofit and go in the middle, um, I don't know, in the middle of the poor and put a big, ass, big ass table, 500 people. And I all cook for him. That's one, that's one of my biggest goals. And so, um, and I've done this before, right? I've done this before and man, I could talk hours about it, but it's, it's what I want to do. And so I'm doing this for that end goal. I'm doing this for those kids yeah. who will get that meal that I will cook for. And, and th th I remove myself from it. There, there's totally, there's no way I'm not going to get the work done, right? There's just no way. And by the way, I have a vision board that is right there. I'm looking at it. It's on my left. And it does have a cool house. It mm -hmm. does have a nice beach, right? But I need, but I really need to, um, what I be, need to be told is, <laughs> hey, stay humble, yeah. get it done, focus on the outcome of others, right? What we were talking about, right? You know, hey, your future you is holding your hand. I don't do that very well. I love to talk about it because it's something I really need to apply, but yeah. that I, I feel that is the number one thing. And to get a little religious, get get uh, get face to face to God, the universe, whatever you are surrendering to. Because a few weeks ago, I posted a story that I that said you need to work for something bigger than yourself. It all ties together, man. You need to work for something bigger that's bigger than you. Whatever it, you know, it might be this charitable thing I want to do. It is bigger than me. Yes. I might want to work for the love of God. That is bigger than me. Yes. For the universe, for the sake of humanity, whatever it might be, we're all fighting a battle that's bigger than us. Even if it's for our parents, even if it's for our parents, but we are all fighting for that. And we need to keep that in our mind every single time. And this, you know, I've been putting off my journaling for a few days. That's what I need to, that's what I need to focus on. That's why I need, Hey, know yourself, self-awareness. See? So that's, the, that's the, that's the thing I need to be yelled at <laughs> for. I love it. Yeah, it's so it's so cool because there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. And it's like it's my goal to show people like if we're going to talk about something that that like we're working towards something larger than ourselves. Like I want to work toward showing everybody a, a lot like I want to I want to work toward making humanity very clear and apparent. Right? I want to work toward making humanity first and foremost. Because vanity, in my opinion, is what leads the charge today. But humility and humanity should really take yeah, precedence. I and I don't see enough of it. So, um, you know, if we're talking about c coming, coming or, or working towards something larger than ourselves, like it's not just me. In fact, every time I sit down here, my goal with somebody else is to be as selfless as humanly possible and let you speak and share your truth and your vision and who you are. Because I think that we can learn so much from everybody around us. And, and it's interesting, like, I talked about this a lot, the last interview I did too. Um, but I'm just finding that, like, I'm still piecing everything together, but it, it's becoming very apparent for me um, that it's still extremely important for me to work toward like highlighting each guest that I have as the incredible person that they are because, and, and that's why like the deeper meeting is what it's called because you have no idea how deep these things can go and get, and you have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. And if I can highlight just a little bit of humanity that you're working with, like that you have to focus on every day to show that you're not just, the person who's closing deals, you're not just the person who's focused on security and marketing. 
you're not just an incredible like thought uh, uh an incredibly thoughtful person but you are when all is said and done a person like and that is incredible and all on its own there's 50 55 things that happen to you today that we will not touch on right now that actually matter yeah. like that probably actually matter more yeah. than and you're, any, and you're else no 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 on. and you're a great host because since day one, remember when it was a mastermind, since day one, you've done this perfectly, right? You've highlighted every single human, um, every single human trait and people, no matter what stage or what mistake or what problem we had. I remember when I was trying to get acting gigs and we were all talking on Zoom and you were in the call and you're like, and I was like, man, I don't seem that I can get like, I just don't feel I can get this. I don't feel, and you're like, hey man, you think people just got acting gigs at first? No. Right. So you're human. It's normal. Like, you know, go through it. I'm like, wait, that is true. I mean, 19, 19 year old me be like, yep, that, 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 that does make sense. Right. And so, no, I, I love to think (laughs) about what you actually just said. Beautiful to leave the audience with this message is like, there are 55 things that today happened that are probably more, even more important than closing deals on a Thursday. But it, they actually highlight the fact that I am a human being before all. And I do have flaws and I'm happy that I do. Because you know what, that what what, we, what would we be boring if we didn't have any flaws? What's perfection? We don't know because yeah. you know it's only it's only up there. <laughs> well, listen, man. I just want to say thank you again for sitting down and talking with me. Um, and I want to I want to give you a special special acknowledgement here because I think like your family and family's always most important and always number one. But the coolest thing is when there are people in your family who you would actually choose to be there. Like, you know how, you know the saying, you can pick your friends, you can't pick your family, but like, you're someone who I would pick. I I am so happy that you are a part of my family. And like, I've gotten to like, to grow up with you, to, to hang out with you. Like I remember in Maryland playing wiffle ball or soccer in the backyard. And, you know, every time you would come to visit every year, like I, I'm just so glad and, and so appreciative to have you in my life and in my family. Um, and I just think that you are an incredibly thoughtful person and you've always been an incredibly intelligent person. <laughs> and if being the president of the United States wasn't such a shit job, I think you should do it because you've got all of it. You're very personable. You're very intelligent. You're a handsome devil. Like you could do anything and everything that you set your mind to. So just like, it's, it's a pleasure for me to get to sit down and talk to you. I always appreciate it. And like, I'm just, I'm just excited to see where things go from here and like to always get to have you as, as part of what I'm doing. And hopefully I always get to be part of what you're doing as well. Yes. That that is exactly what I was going to say. This would be nothing without having this little light in the middle of the normalcy and the difference in what people, right, we're all different in this world. And so to have someone similar and to have someone to share these things with, to have someone to actually guide me, because you have guided me through so many things and you continue to do so. And I am beyond grateful. Like, you, I'm glad you could put it into words. I can't. I am. Re- I really just, you know, I love you, man. And it's it's something that. It's something that I I feel that you know this is just the start, man. This is, this is we're only getting started right now, and so it's so yes, exciting. it's very exciting. And I uh, you know gotta gotta come there in Austin for part two. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I'll have my garage set up. I'll have all my equipment. I'm gonna get a second microphone. Nice. We're gonna make it set up super cool. It's gonna be amazing. I'm looking forward to doing yes. that. Um, but yeah, man, we'll wrap it up. I'm just so glad that we got to do this. Like I said, it's always a pleasure. So real quick, just let everybody know where they can go to check you out. If they're in- interested in, in inquiring, hearing a little bit more about what you do, the services you offer, like where can they go to find So you? building a website at the moment, rebuilding it, but my company's Reaver Marketing. So R-E-A-V-E-R marketing.com. That's where, um, you know, anyone who's interested in having a cool email infrastructure that is secure and managed, totally offset, not going to waste your time, not going to waste your money. It's only going to work if it works and if it doesn't guess what you have a free infrastructure so um that's revermarketing.com and you know i don't post a lot sometimes i post a little bit of these gems that we dropped today me and peter um but my instagram is emmanuel e-m-a-n-u-e-l-e underscore d-i underscore prima p-r-i-m-a and yeah that's i'll make it. sure i'll make sure that i include all of the links below so everybody can find you 
Um, we'll make sure that you, you just send everything to me. It'll be there. So if you want to, if you want to hear more about what he says, if you want to hear more about his journey, like this is only the beginning, and I think that's the most exciting thing. So the best time to get involved with a great thing is when it first starts. So everybody should be getting involved at this moment because a year from now, two years from now, his premiums are going to be a little bit higher, probably a lot a bit higher, and you're not going to be able to uh, to even entertain the idea and, and so guess what it, get it while it's hot guess what it's gonna it's gonna be harder to be a guest on this podcast so y'all better tune in <laughs> i love it man yeah so so listen as always to everybody listening i'm just so glad that you got here you sat down you listened to what we're saying we got to share a little bit about what goes on in our minds with you and i hope you found some value in that if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and give us a rate over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We have video podcasts now. It's amazing. So over on Spotify, you can actually watch this podcast. I'm going to post it on YouTube. I'll be cutting up clips. So you can go check me out on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, YouTube, Instagram, anywhere. I'm going hard with the content these days, really trying to do something here, really trying to get my word out because I feel like it's super important. And I'm going to continue to have amazing guests on this show, just like Emmanuel. I'm going to continue to do amazing things, and I'm just excited to have you here with me. So again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here and sharing this with us. And remember, my friends, stay secure. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop a five on Apple. <laughs> <laughs>